Good morning, everybody. I am your host, Gary McLean, and you are watching Talent Talk. Welcome to the show, everyone. Um, not sure who's actually here yet, but I'll, I'll definitely be peeking in to see who's paying a visit. Uh, today's guest is an experienced actress who's worked on numerous networks such as The CW, Hallmark, ABC, CBC, you name it. She's been there. She's done it. Um, but her, her talents do not end at the acting side of things. She's also delved into a bit of the directing, uh, producing, uh, and all this experience has actually helped her develop into a bit of a mentor and coach to aspiring actors such as myself. Uh, and me being a previous student, uh, I've definitely learned a few things from her. Um, so please join me in, in welcoming Yvonne Chapman. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Um, so Yvonne, my first question is kind of twofold, I guess. Uh, the first one is when did you get started? And then what did you do before you got into acting? Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, when I got started, um, you know, I, ew, I think it started when I was a kid playing make-believe in my room with no one watching. <laughs> I mean, I was a really shy kid, but I've always was kind of compelled to perform in some way. Um, so really, I guess it started there. And then I got up the courage to kind of do an acting class and do my first uh, theater performance in junior high. Um, and I took acting um, lessons kind of throughout, you know, school, high school, things like that. Um, did modeling in my late teens, moved on to commercial work after that. Um, but in between all that, I mean, I went to school and I actually got my degree in finance. So I had a career before this uh, working in corporate finance. Um, I was a merger and acquisitions analyst for a while. And then I became an actor. And I've been at this full time for full time, um, you know, not having another job outside of acting for about six years now. Yeah. Okay, so that's not overly long, honestly. No, no. Um, and, and what was your inspiration, I guess, to, to kind of change that career path? You know, I think what happened was I was, look, I really liked my job before. I, I loved my job in finance. It was really interesting work. Um, loved the companies, loved the team that I was working with. Um, and at that time, I was doing my charter financial analyst course. It's a really high demanding course. It was like I was studying in the evenings, I was studying on the weekends, like my whole life was spent at the library. Um, I didn't leave school after I left school and university. And as a stress relief, I was like, well, I wanna pick up acting again. I always loved it. It was something that, you know, was always kind of like in my peripheral at least. And then I did a couple acting classes in Calgary and uh, fell in love with it again. And, you know, I started, you know, my acting career later in life. Um, but it got to the point I'm like, well, you know what, if I'm going to try this, I, I got to try it now. So it was kind of a spontaneous decision, to be honest, but kind of not because, like I said, it was something that was always in my life in some capacity. And I just decided to go for it. OK, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, did you. Do you have an actor or actress that's kind of inspired you in general to to take this approach and and delve into the acting or is it just something you know something you did as a child and just that's how it was probably more the latter yeah. yeah i mean i have a lot of people who inspire me and i won't go into the list because we only have so much time um <laughs> but truly i think it just got to the point where you know when you, there's something that's always in the back of your head especially when it's a dream or an aspiration and you know, for a long time in my life, I really didn't think that I was cut out for it. Because like I said, I was a really shy person. And um, you think of actor types, you think of like someone who's super extroverted and out there, and I just wasn't that person. So it took me a long time to see myself um, potentially being able to do this. And then I can't even tell you really what the point was in my life where I'm like, this is it, I'm gonna go and do it. Um, I think it was just more of this insatiable need to to know what it would have been like and not to think what if. 
Um, and I'm just very lucky that it turned out. But even regardless, if it if I wasn't doing this full time, if it was, you know, a shorter stint, um, I still wouldn't regret it because, you know, I really encourage people to if this is something that really drives you, that you love, uh, that you can't stop thinking about. Why not? You know, absolutely. And I know I'm curious to see if you have the same experience as I do. Um, probably not because you probably work a lot more than I do. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know if. Uh, I go a certain length of time without actually having some sort of outlet artistically. Um, I almost get into like a bit of a funk and, and I get uh, like, I'm, I'm like, oh, I need to do something, you know, even just give me an audition so I can do an audition, you know, just so I'm doing something creatively. Um, and I think that's partially why I eventually started doing my own projects and such. And I'm wondering if it's kind of the same thing for you or. Oh yeah. Especially right now. <laughs> I feel like everybody's kind of feeling this pain of, you know, I will say to you guys, uh, for those watching too, that we're hearing a lot of different information about what's happening in the industry right now. But let, I, I promise you, it's a matter of when, not if, if it's coming back. And, you know, this information is changing all the time. But one thing that's completely uncontested um, across all avenues that I've been keeping my ear to is that it's just going to be a boom once things open again, because network streaming services are looking for content. Everybody's watched everything during um, the lockdown. So we're going to be really busy and I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, I hear you, Gary, like, you know, it's, it's when it's just a part of you, when you just you need to practice that, you try to find the outlets for it. And I think creating your own work is fantastic because as actors, I, I truly believe that we need to have um, a voice in not just the acting perspective, but to understand the producing and the directing side it, and the writing side. It gives you a, a different way into the work itself. It actually helps you as an actor. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, because again, like you said, you've about six years that you've been full time focusing strictly on acting. Um, how did you find the marketing side of it, trying to market yourself and promote yourself? Uh, I know for a lot of new actors coming in, that's that's kind of a question of like, well, how do I get my name out there? Like, how I, I don't know how to do this. Um, right. Obviously, you've you've had some success doing that, and and maybe you just have a little bit of insight. You know, I, I think that yeah, you're right. That's a question that comes up a lot. Is um, you know, how do I get myself out there? How do I connect with people? Like, I was really lucky. Uh, to be honest, I got um, a really fantastic agent to start off with. Um, I was signed with the Characters Talent Agency, still am, and they're amazing. I My agent's awesome. Um, so he's helped pitch me a lot to casting directors. And, you know, to be honest, I think the best thing for me personally has just always been focused on the work. Always. It's first and foremost, be a really good actor um, and always try to improve yourself in that because, even if you get into the room, let's say you're really good at marketing and you're trying to get into the room, then getting the job depends on how much you can pull it off, right? Yeah. Um, so I always I always tell actors that too, you know, like I understand that social media is always a conversation. I understand people always wondering like, well, what can I do on social media that's gonna help me stand out? To be honest, perfectly, I social media for me is not my thing. <laughs> I try my best on it. I try to engage people. I think it's really fun. Um, but I think it's it comes down to focus on your work as an actor first. Um, find representation that really works for you, or you know, as if you're self represented and you're going out and you're finding your own opportunities, that's fantastic. But really, it comes down to the work. You will get recognized for for the what you can bring as an actor. You know, first and foremost. Right. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Um, so, having said that. How does that lead up to your role last year on Street Legal? And how did that path kind of occur? Because um, at this point, was it more f marketing on your end? Or what, did you have a lot of help through your management uh, group or your agent? Or I'm just wondering how this whole process of, if you just walk us through the whole process. Oh, sure. Of, uh, Street Legal. <laughs> and, and just for the folks out there, I'm just going to yeah. quickly uh, also pop up the poster for people there we go oh there it is yeah look at oh, that guys like uh yeah that's that's pretty core group there that 
I, I've seen uh, a lot of these people, including yourself, of course, on a few different things. So that's that's very cool. Yeah, very fortunate to work with them. They're all really, really lovely people. Um, well, so for Street Legal, it happens like any other project. Um, I got the audition. I self-taped it with the wonderful casting director in Toronto, Stephanie Gorin. She's amazing. Um, so it started with a self-tape which I hope is really encouraging to people uh, because that's all we're going to be seeing for some time, <laughs> you know? So anyway, you can get booked off self tapes. So I sent it to Toronto cause I'm based in Vancouver. And then about a week later after that self tape, I had a call back through Skype um, where I met with um, Bruce Smith, amazing showrunner. Um, and I think I couldn't see them because it was through Skype, but I think some of the producers and Stephanie, of course, was on the line there as well. And then after that, uh, they offered me what they call a test deal. So um, at that point, they flew me out to Toronto. I did a chemistry and screen test with other actors who were shortlisted for other roles just to see what we would look like on camera together. Um, and then I got the call a few days later saying that, uh, they were offering me the role. So it really comes down to just being, getting that audition. Like it really wasn't different um, than anything, any other process that you'd normally would go through as an actor uh, to, to be seen for a role. Okay. Yeah. I hope that demystifies some things for people. Cause I think people, you know, sometimes like, well, what did you do special or different or whatever? And it started out just like any other audition, so. Fair enough, and and that's actually a good segue for me to just talk to the the crowd a little bit. Um, if you do have questions about anything that you know Yvonne and I are talking about, please feel free to post it, and we'll we'll make sure we'll try and get uh, some things answered for you. I can't see uh, who's on there, but I see Diana and Liz are there. Hi guys, <laughs> from what I can see in the comments, anyway. Yes, so uh, yeah, I, that's about all I can see at this point as well. <laughs> but. Uh, um, no, that's that's great. And so, right now the series ran for one season. Yeah. And um, where uh, you you did not get it renewed, unfortunately, or it did not get renewed, unfortunately. Um, so, as a, an actor who's had that experience to be on a, a series regular on on a prominent TV series, um, how do you deal with the th effects afterwards you know you've been informed hey sorry we're not getting renewed um yeah. you know you've, you've kind of had the comfort of having that constant work for a year yeah. at least um and now it's like oh well back to score one um so how do you kind of deal with that and yeah we'll just start with that ah uh, you know good question <laughs> i we were i think we're all you know super bums that we didn't get another season but it's gonna happen more often than not. And just like with auditioning and just being an actor in general, I think you you get used to the fact that, you know, things aren't gonna turn out the way that maybe you'd hope they would. Um, you know, especially for auditions as well, right? I mean, we're not booking everything. And more often than not, we're, we're hearing no than a yes. Um, so look, you take it for what it is. For me, it was one of the best experiences, the best experience I've had so far in my professional career. Um, I now have that experience of being one of like a, an ensemble, a part of a series lead, um, understanding what that job entails. It's very different than, for example, if you're growing up and you're showing as a day player or even just a guest star recurring. Um, and, and to take that and just hopefully just make me a better performer because I'm in this for the long haul. So I, I'm not quitting anytime soon. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, not being, of course you're gonna be upset about it. Of course, all of us were, were sad not to continue on because it was such an amazing team. We hit the lottery with the cast and the crew. They're all amazing people and we still keep in touch. So, you know, coming out of that, I, I have so much more for it. I have so many good friends from the show. I have great experience from it. And I'm just going to take that into my next project. Okay. And that's the thing, right? I mean, I think that's the experience that all of us, uh, at least guys at my level anyway, would aspire to, is <laughs> to get to that point, right? So congrats for you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but it's also got to open some opportunities, I would think, to, to have that kind of uh, opportunity to come your way. Um, like, 
I, I, I don't know if they're knocking at your door or anything, but I'm, I'm sure it's probably opened a few more opportunities for you. Um, yes and no, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> we all know, hey, let's be real here. Like you're an actor too, Gary. This is a tough business, right? Um, it, it has in a sense where I'm now in, you know, luckily a certain place where um, I'm, I'm, I'm going out for certain types of roles, you know, uh, like large guest stars and stuff and be more considered for that for sure. But it, it just pushed me into a different category where, you know, nothing's changed in terms of the work. Nothing's changed in terms of like, you know, the number of people that they're seeing uh, per role. It's, Really, it, in terms of the process of, of my work and, and focusing on what I'm doing, um, hasn't really changed a whole lot. And I hope that doesn't dishearten anybody um, in hearing that. But uh, yeah, it, it hasn't really shifted. You know, people aren't really knocking down my door or anything like that, um, which is perfectly fine. <laughs> For sure. Um... Well, having said that, though, I mean, it's given you a lot of content for your uh, your, your demo reel, let's say. And uh, on that note, I think I'll, I'll just share, if you don't mind, share, folks, uh, your demo reel. And so if nobody's watched Street Legal, um, this is kind of what some of this is what you've been missing out on. It actually helps if I hit the right button. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Or I just acted out here. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Right. Yeah, just act it all out now. No, no, no. We both know how the story goes. Rip off the band-aid. Yes. He has the right to the use and enjoyment of his own home. And you can't help him with that. Watch me. <laughs> Your sales quintupled in the first year. It never occurred to you that your drug was addictive. Hell no, we've no idea there are going to be addiction issues. We told people not to abuse the drug. So you knew it could be abused? Any drug could be abused. Did you think it was likely to be abused? Doctors decided to prescribe to their patients. If mistakes were made, that's on them. They're supposed to be informed. They were misinformed by you. <laughs> You need to lock your door. I can look after myself. I stink. <laughs> yes, sir, Adam, darling, you're nothing but pure man. <laughs> you smell like wet socks. <laughs> Are you ready to go? <laughs> Tell Alice I took you by force. Come on, we need some girl time. Just my arm. It's always weird watching yourself. <laughs> but I'm like, ugh. I know the feel, but from my perspective, I, I thought that was phenomenal. Um, Thank you. I remember when I watched your demo reel the first time, like, yeah, exactly. Uh, Corey Ger Gerard just Thanks, said, Corey. wow. <laughs> and that's, that, that was my feeling as well. Um, like, and I think I'd mentioned this to you before. Um, I've seen a bunch of other demo reels, and I've never actually had a demo reel where it actually affected my emotional state. Um, so you, you were able to, to it, it, you know, um, instill certain emotions out of me. Um, just what? Just with that, like a two-minute clip. Thank you so um, much. It means a lot. So yeah, definitely. Well done. That was that was fantastic, in my opinion. Um, since we're kind of we just finished watching that demo reel, um, I'm sure there's a few folks out there that are kind of curious on your thoughts on the importance of a demo reel and uh, the good importance question. of maybe the quality of the demo reel. Really good question. Um, this is not my first demo reel, guys. So I've had demo reels before. When I was first starting out acting, I made it a point to really go on to um, student films, uh, independent films um, out in Vancouver to try to create a body of work for myself and also just to get experience on set and 
know what the heck I was doing. Um, I, I really like student films when you're first starting as an actor because one, you know, they have a certain level of mentorship with them. They have a, access to really good equipment and it's likely that the film is gonna be finished uh, because it's part of the curriculum. So you're always kind of guaranteed um, something from there. And so I, I use that as my body of work first. Um, now I will say that, you know, Street Legal wasn't my first experience of being pinned for a network show. That was probably the lucky number seven <laughs> that I was able to kind of get down to that category of almost being a lead on a show. And and on those auditions leading up, my hair is doing something really weird. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> In those auditions leading up, if if the casting director, if they asked for my demo reel, um, look, I get that the work that we get to do doesn't necessarily represent the actors that we are wholly, right? And that's usually, you know, for an actor that could feel like a problem because you only have so much work that you've done and you're like, but I could do more, I could do this. And so my agent for me, actually, um, what he did is he took some of my old self tapes that were really good or the ones that got me, you know, further down the line in the audition process. And he also sent those as another thing to, um, to casting if they requested it. I don't know how many times they've actually requested a demo reel from me though. Okay, that's fair. Really, yeah. um, you know, it's something that I might not have had privy to in that information, but as far as I know, it hasn't, it's only been a handful of times and I audition quite a bit. So um, in terms of like the importance of a demo reel, it's always good to have something in your back pocket to show casting directors if they need something extra, uh, just if they like really loved your tape and your audition and they want to pitch you, which is always such a fantastic thing uh, to producers, directors, have something in their back pocket, but it could be, you know, if they're willing to accept it, self tapes um, that you've done in the past or something that you just want to put on tape with either a coach or a teacher or whatever it may be. Um, but I highly recommend, of course, have that conversation with your agent um, and see what, the, what it is that they need in order to market and pitch you to casting directors. Right, okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm assuming you're also part of Actors Access, like the majority of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you got to Sorry? You have to be. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like, I know, for example, they've got like little 10 second clips you can add on there. I, I think you can add more, but I know my, at the time my agent recommended 10 seconds. That's about it. Okay. Um, in a way, that I, I think that's a good thing in terms of it. it it's great for the agent to be able to send just that little clip, right? Mm -hmm. 10 seconds is not a lot of time, but at the same time, like I can take 10 seconds out of your demo reel and I think it would be phenomenal, um, like a, a representation of what you can do. And where was I going with that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'm still kind of delving onto the, the importance of how uh, A, um, it's it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be a street legal type demo reel. No. Like you said, it can be it something from your first indie project that yeah. maybe you're not that proud of, but at least it gives something as a representation for people to see and see how you work on set and and Absolutely. work with other people, things like that. Um, I know some folks have also done the mock um demo reels. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have thoughts on on that. I mean, I have my thoughts. I mean, I think, I don't think they're horrible. Um, either way, you're still working with somebody yeah. on the screen. Um, so you're still having to show what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, anyway, just wondering what your thoughts were on some of the mock ones that are kind of being put out there. Right. Like, you know, I... Again, I think it's a conversation people need to have with the representation. Um, the way that I view it, I don't think you necessarily need to do that as for an actor because I I think that look the economics of of an artist. We got to be really careful with how you spend your money, right? Especially if you're going to go through this, you know, a full time. And I think you know if you're going to throw a thousand dollars into a mock audition, why not do that thousand dollars and put it into your own project? show your writing, your directing, your, you know, all those skills. And then you get, I, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I think you get so much more out of that. Um, on top of it, the way that I think of it too, you're not tricking any of these casting directors, right? Like if you're trying to pull it off as like um, um, 
an actual you know show that maybe you've been on you know these casting directors are pros they're not going to be tricked by that so sometimes i think you know again if you talk to representation and they're like yeah it's it's perfectly fine throw something on tape with uh like in a self tape style that's going to cost you like 60 bucks for the hour um and then you have something you know to represent you in that way um it, it's just more an effective means of how you how you spend your time and your money and that's just my personal opinion because i've personally never done one of those mock auditions uh, or not mock auditions sorry the mock um demo reel yeah yeah but again that's just my own my own spin on it yeah for sure it's just it's just an opinion right um yeah. uh i was just kind of curious um that actually ties in a little bit to uh and actually one lady just asked a question here as well um yep. mary armstrong was asking if Hi, you mary. Involved with, uh, indie productions or other act, uh, acting opportunities or do you stick mostly with actra um and i think that's an important question especially if you are a union actor Mm -hmm. as to what you can and cannot do um yeah you and, cannot be on any production that's not union when, once you join the union it's uh you unless that indie production is able to get you let's say an like um a low budget agreement through ubcp which i'm affiliated with or actra um and as a producer i've done that too if if i really like an actor in their union then i'll go through the system and being like well i really want to use them can we work on a way and they're really good with that too um, but no, if, if you're union, you can't do anything that's non-union. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and, and again, that also ties into my next little segment here about uh, the, the indie projects. Um, I know yourself, like I had mentioned earlier on in the introduction that, uh, you know, you've done a little bit of directing, a little bit of producing. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you want to do more of? Um, or, or is in front of the camera, you're... you're that's where you want to be. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I, um, <laughs> I'm getting excited because I directed my first short film, um, back in November and we just kind of finished all, all the, uh, post-production and submitted to a couple festivals already. I fell in love with directing. I, oh, it was so much fun to be able to be creatively involved in a project from, you know, the, the cradle to the grave, so to speak. Um, and I, I have to say it again, like I, I really do believe guys that, you know, acting first and foremost is my focus. I still have so much to do in that, like I barely scratched the surface. Um, but I think the more that you understand the process and the work and the more that you respect the jobs of everybody that's, that is behind the camera, the better decisions you're gonna make in front of it, period. If you understand the editing room, if you understand what the director has to do, uh, throughout the day, if you're understanding what your DOP is doing, um, it just makes you a better collaborator and a better artist when you get to set. And it makes it so much more fun. I mean, the, the thing that I love about film the most is the collaborative aspect of it. You know, you have, it's a miracle to get a group of people together and kind of create this amazing visionary thing. Um, and so when you can kind of come to that in a really cohesive way and understanding everybody's job, um, it just makes the flow and the ease and like the the project overall just gets elevated. So that's what I hope to bring as an actor. And I think by doing that, I need to understand what's happening behind the camera. Okay. Yeah. Um, and have you considered writing your own stuff or have you already? Maybe you have. I have. <laughs> I've written my own stuff, but I, and I'm laughing because I'm still really shy about um, sharing my writing. I have with a few, you know, uh, friends of mine, but I have a lot of writer friends and like, hey, I, I respect what they do. Writing is difficult. Um, Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Including you. I mean, you've written your own stuff and they're, it's fantastic. Um, oh, yeah. But I just think, too, it's really important for actors to understand where the writer is coming from. It really helps you to break down scripts a lot faster. It helps you to understand the tone of certain shows um, and just in understanding the beats and transitions and just the overall story arc because we're professional storytellers. So again, the more that you know what's happening in behind the scenes before you actually go for the audition and before you get to set, the better informed you are, right? To be, to yeah. be a better actor. 
absolutely. Um, it, it definitely, I, I know for myself, it's helped me understand a few things. And, and like you said, like all aspects of it, um, like, uh, having produced my own stuff and attempting directing once, which we won't get into. And, uh, <laughs> but I also um, really appreciate like what everyone's done, it right? It, it absolutely does. Um, yeah. Unless you're one of those big actors that have come on um, in pre-production because it's like, um, because you're part of the distribution deal, because you're part of the marketing or whatever it may be, you realize how later actors actually come in in the process. Like this is a baby that's been um, nurtured for a very long time, most of the time, the projects, right? And I'm like, holy crap, like respect to everybody who got this off the ground and just thank you for letting me be a part of it as an actor. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, if... <laughs> Lost my train of thought. No, gotta, good. Gotta, love, gotta love it when that happens live. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I love your shirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I'm just wearing this plain black, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I don't have a lot of plain shirts, to be honest. So. No, it's better. Yeah, unless I'm wearing, like, my um, my golf shirt or something. But that's, yeah. that's really about it. Um, <clears throat> what's next? Now, now that... Do you have a plan as to what you want to do next, regardless whether it's acting, mm -hmm. personal projects, whatever the case is? Like, do you, do you have something that's coming up for you that you want to do next and delve into? Well, um, what before things shut down, I was booked for two different recurring roles uh, with two different shows. Yeah, it was really I'm so excited about these projects and I really hope they come back. I think they will. Um, it was funny because it they got postponed right after my fittings and I was due to be on set in, you know, three days before it hit. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from that. I, I really hope that things get up and running, of course, with first and foremost, with everything being safe for everybody. Um, but it seems like things are picking up, you know, there's auditions happening now. I'm doing a couple self tapes next week uh, for my agent. So We'll see. I mean, for me, it's first and foremost, I'm really focusing on that work. So I picked up my scripts again, going through it, working through, um, you know, what I could do with the characters in that regard. Um, but other than that, it's I, I'm just waiting to see really what the information is coming out post COVID and what the industry is going to look like. But um, it's always going to be acting for now, you know, first and foremost. I would love, love to have another opportunity to direct. Um, I'll probably maybe be a little bit less shy with my writing, <laughs> try to do something with it. My God, I have so many projects on my laptop, which is this big folder of me and like all the stuff that I've written. And I'm just, I'm just too scared. <laughs> to, like, to share them yet. <laughs> you gotta throw one of those out there and see what happens. I know, I know. Yeah. You gotta be brave, right? It's, it's tough. It's tough being in this business. Like you're constantly being challenge to uh to put yourself out there but you ha you have to yeah so. absolutely right and yeah. the same way like i've always been a bit of an introvert so um and it's kind of funny because i have other introvert friends they're like well you're not an introvert because you're doing this um <laughs> it's so different though it's so it different. is it i don't know what it is but when you when you're put in front of a screen or you're acting it's just not that it goes away it's just not as important I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like I still am a shy person in general, but there's just something about it that makes it okay. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. It, it, it is I, I know I can't explain it either because you put me in a normal social gathering, an event somewhere, like a festival event or something like that, and I'm just Mr. Quiet, just standing there doing absolutely nothing. So. Yeah, yeah, um, I hear you. I, I yeah. really do try my very best at those um at those things, but I tend to avoid them because I'm just like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Right? No, I absolutely. stand in a corner and eat some hors d'oeuvres and make yeah. it just, I'm, I'm usually just waiting for somebody to come talk to me. But then <laughs> I usually get the um, the comment that, well, you didn't look like you really wanted to be bothered, so I wasn't going to talk to you. <laughs> and they put on that face of like... Right, like... <laughs> um, you know, or, yeah, the other comment, uh, this was when I was younger, um, was that, uh, yeah, I look like a psycho. And I was going to kill somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I was just you know sitting there solemn face but look crazy so <laughs> i've gotten the same same comments not maybe not psycho but i've gotten like you know you just look very unpleasant and yeah. I, I don't mean to it's just my face 
<laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> just have the, you know, we all just have that face once in a while. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What can we do? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I do want to touch slightly, just a little bit on, on, on your uh, craft studios um, a bit. Um, the, the great thing about that, like I mentioned in, in the intro that you, you know, you, you help mentor and coach people through this project, but you also bring people in um, to help the coaching as well. Like I know uh, you've got one coming up with David Lorraine yeah. um, for, for the, uh, the American accent. Um, so that's, that's great because um, it gives all of us actors another opportunity to, to get that coaching that we may not necessarily get the opportunity to do. Um, now you've obviously had to build up a bit of a, a, a network and rapport with these people. I'm guessing to be able to ask them to do this kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> um, when it comes to this whole networking side and, and building up the rapport with people, like, like for example, how how did you get Dave Lorraine to do it? Um, like, had you worked with him in the past? Um, Meet him through somebody else, and you just said, "Hey, buddy, you want to come do this for me?" And <laughs> no. Well, so what act, what happened actually? Um, I was doing an audition for Marvel. And in the audition, um, I just really wanted to go the extra mile because the character, I can't talk about it actually. <laughs> I was just like, I signed an NDA for this. Anyway, oh, oh, I wanted fair. him to do a different dialect outside of American. Um, and he was just really great and we just really vibed. So I, um, <laughs> I, I I was like, man, you're really you're really good. Like, do you do you do classes? Do you do this and within Calgary? Uh, because it's the first. I was at home at the time, just visiting family and preparing for this audition that I was flying back out to Vancouver uh, to do. And um, yeah, I just asked him. I said, hey, if you're ever up for for doing an American dialect, which is what we're teaching on June 28th, um, I'm like, please, like, let me know if if that's something that you'd be up to because. I always encourage my students to, I mean, I am based in BC, so I teach on the downtimes when I can come back to Calgary to visit, you know, family. And I love, I love this artistic community, Gary, like you guys are fantastic. I think we have such a huge pool of talent here. And it started with me just bringing back what I've learned working in Vancouver and Toronto and Montreal and LA, like all those places and just bringing it back to this community here. So it started with a few people asking if I could do a workshop here and there, and then it just organically grew um, out for from there. Um, but anyway, back to the point, I always, I always encourage to your point, Gary, when, you know, bringing other voices in, when I'm not here, I always tell people I'm like, go and do a different acting class with someone else. <laughs> and I, I say that because it's guys, it's really important. Like, I don't know everything. I'm, I'm okay with saying that. Of course, I don't know everything. It, and a, any acting coach there doesn't know everything. What they're trying to do, and I hope what their intent is, is trying to bring out, you know, what is already inherently in you in terms of a talent and a presence. Because, you know, one of my favorite sayings too in all of this is authenticity limits your competition. Nobody is going to be better at being you than you. And so if you can find a coach that you can work with that can bring that out in your acting, that's that's the winning ticket. And there's different methodologies of doing that, right? Like every studio has their own way of doing that. Um, and with David, what I love about his workshop, too, is because a lot of the productions in Canada are from the States. Um, and you need to know how to authentically give an American accent, period. You do not want to take yourself out of the running by having the Canadianisms uh, in your auditions. Um, so he goes through like an exhaustive list. It's a four hour workshop, an exhaustive list of like the common words and phrases and intonations that you might hear within a script. And just so that you can work that on your own. So if you're getting a self taper audition and it's for an American network and it's based in an American story, if it's supposed to be shooting in Vancouver, but it's, you know, Seattle based, they always do that. Right. <laughs> or LA. Um, you, you have to sound like an American because they're trying to sell the world of that story. Um, and I have heard people lose a job um, because they had a Canadian accent. Uh, because the reality is, you know, most shows don't have a dialect coach like David on set. And if they do, it's mainly for the leads. So if you're going to go up for a role that's even in like an actor role, one or two lines, principal, whatever it may be, um, that's something you've got to do on your own. That's a skill that you have to have. Yes. 
Yeah. And, and, yeah, absolutely. And that's that's where really we are super fortunate in Calgary to have a local guy like David Lorini that, that can do that. Um, He's so yeah, good. Absolutely. Um, so if anybody watching has not um, reached out to David Lorini, he is very open to having people reach out to him. Um, I hope he's okay with me saying that. <laughs> oh, of course he is. And yeah, guys, check out the, uh, if you're, if you want, check out the workshop on June 28th. That's on the website, craftactorstudio.com. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. And it is going to give you a lot of the tools to, to go forward and, and refer back to so that you can get rid of the Canadianisms in your audition. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And he doesn't just do the standard American. He he can uh, teach you pretty much any dialect you want to know. So he, he's the man in town. He he's the guy you want to check out for sure. Yeah. Um so we're we're kind of in the, the last stretch here in the last 20 minutes, and you and I had kind of discussed previously about doing a, a little phrase challenge. Uh, <laughs> yes. How quickly did that go, by the way? Right. I, I mean 40 minutes just went boom like that. Yeah. Um, I hope it was the same for the people watching that, uh, but it definitely yeah. seemed fast for us. I hope I didn't bore anybody. And so while, you know, uh, Yvonne and I are kind of setting up our little challenge here, which of course we, we do encourage in, uh, um, the, the folks watching to participate. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that, yeah, feel free to pop them up in the chat. Both Yvonne and I can see what you're typing there. And uh, we'll, we'll try and answer them either after we do our little challenge or as we're doing our challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll just go okay. with it. Um, so generally what I do is I give the guests the opportunity to act theirs out first, uh, mainly this because I'm just a chicken to do the first one. Okay. So <laughs> huh. um, I will let you choose a phrase. All right. And, and just so everybody, and I'll explain it just, you know, so everybody knows what's kind of going on. Um, both Yvonne and I have like a, what's called a phrase generator, and it actually just creates random phrases. I can't see what she's looking at. She can't see what I'm looking at. So she's going to select one. She's going to try acting it out, charades like, and uh, we're all going to try and guess what, what she's trying to act out. Uh, there's no, uh, you can't give any verbal clues other than maybe sound effects. Um, okay. So you, you, you know, you can make car noises or honking or stuff like that. Uh, but there's no actual words um, or, or, you know, Ooh. rhymes with or anything okay. like that. All Nothing right. Like um, can I indicate like how many words there are? You can indicate how many words there are. Yes, but just by going like three, you know, one, whatever. Okay. Doesn't matter. Um, and we, we have, and oh. and just because I have experienced this once already, I am going to give a minute because you are going to be amazed how fast that minute goes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm picking a really hard one here. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself, but all right. All right. Okay. Um, are we ready? Yes. Okay. And oh, I'm not going to actually put you on. There we go. So people can see oh, a little better. Look at myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And go. <clears throat> Climbing. Uh, uh, escalating. Um, oh. Uh, mouse burying. Um. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh. <laughs> God. Okay. okay. Yeah. Five or eating. Uh. Cute mouse <laughs> hole. Mouse hole. Okay. Um. Peeking. Uh, okay. Uh, growing. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I choose this one? Um, okay, hold on. And, and you're actually out of time. See how fast oh, it goes? Shoot. I was trying yeah. to do more. Um, can I say it? Uh, let's let's see if anybody else does. Anybody else want to throw up a guess in I mean, there? I did a horrible job, so probably not. But uh, yeah, otherwise. <laughs> Let's let's hear it. I, I'm I'm honestly horrible at guessing this stuff, so it's it's yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, Corey's got rabbit hole. Um, all right. Let's let's hear what it is. It was mountain out of a molehill. Oh man. Okay. It was like I mean, like what was I doing? That, I don't that, know. Was, that, that was a pretty tough one. 
That uh, was really the first tough first one. round. That's that's pretty tough. You you just went right all for it, just like that. Most spine in the hole mountain. <laughs> Dang got <God>, mountain. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> and like, I don't, what does, you know, how do you delineate when you're acting charades between a mouse and a mole? Yeah, right. Exactly. I don't know why I picked that one. Anyway. No, that's all good. Like, yeah, kudos <laughs> for you for uh, just going right out there. And uh, I'm going to try and pick something hopefully a little easier. Um, Sorry for putting through everyone through that. <laughs> no worries. All right. Uh, um, all right. You get you ready for what I'm about to put yeah. down here? All right. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Driving. Oh, sorry. Three words. Okay. First word, driving. Car. Uh, driver, automobile, steering wheel. Second, you. In the driver's seat? Me. Okay. Me driving. Okay, three. Oh, road rage. Um, <laughs> uh, driving me crazy. You're driving me crazy. Uh, ah, um, I thought it was driving me crazy, no? Um, so close. <laughs> Matt, uh, Matt uh, driving me insane. Driving me insane. <laughs> I'm out of time anyway, but it's, uh, oh my god! What I know, it? right? It's so fast. Um, oh, I just couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to do that last word. So it, it was driving me nuts. Oh, yes, Mary god. got it right there. Mary oh, just got okay. it. Sorry, no. I should have given him a little more time for the audience. No, there. no, 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 that was good. Um, Mary got it. She did. Yes. So kudos to Mary. Mary's uh, yeah. round job, one man. winner today. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are no prizes. No, no, <laughs> just, you can just brag. You can just brag to everybody. <laughs> um, it's immortalized in the comments, so everyone knows that she she got it. Absolutely, it, it will. We be. did a better job than me. A lot of people were very close. It, in fact, for, for the recording later on, I will even say, "Congrats, Mary!" in the comments. There we go. <laughs> that way, they know she got it right. It's on the internet. <laughs> it's there forever. All right, let's do another round. Unless there's okay. questions, if, if, does anybody have any other any questions they would like to uh, throw our way? Usually, we do a best of. Well, we do like three quick rounds and okay. see if one of us can be a winner. All right. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to do another one that's five words again. <sighs> Okay, I can do sounds though. You said yes. You can do sound effects. Okay. Maybe I should have done the sound of a nut cracking. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what does that even? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll figure it <laughs> <this> out. <laughs> All right. Ready? Um, okay. Uh, I am ready. If you are ready, we will. Yeah. Go. Fun. Five words. One first word. <laughs> Barking. Climbing, digging, uh, flower. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, opening. Oh, dang. Ah! First word. Uh, is that the bar? Okay. Word to you. Um, Dog looking over a fence. <laughs> um, uh, oh, um, somebody has guessed barking yeah, up the wrong tree. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm just going to give it to them because, okay. you know. Yeah, you guys got it. Yeah, and Mary's got it. And the time was up anyway, but uh, great. Yeah. Look at you guys I go. I ran out of steam, so thank God. Ah, it's, 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 I'm horrible at this. I just you're not I'm horrible. Like, I'm what's horrible. going on? <laughs> no, I mean I'm not giving you much to work with, Carrie. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's another one. Another one. Corey's oh, got no, it. No, Corey. So it's just me. It's just me. It's all good. 
<laughs> Everybody else has got it. We're good to go. Um, all right. Let's see if I can. Okay, I think this one's fairly easy. Um, okay. Well, don't say that because yeah, if I right. don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Oh my God, mm -hmm. you're driving me nuts. All right. Here we go. Three words, first word, up, looking up, okay, up, yeah, second word, uh, down, in, up, in, yeah, three, up in the arms, yes, see, you're so clear and concise, <laughs> and here I am throwing these, like, five word things at you <laughs> we got it nice there we go got that one cool yay i'm i'm, I'm excited yeah you got it <laughs> <laughs> all right i think we have we have time for one more each and then i i think we can uh we can wrap this up and uh answer any sure. questions that might pop up yeah um all right oh that's too hard um oh that's too hard uh, okay, I think I could do this one. I'm probably wrong. Okay, let's just let's just try it. <laughs> All right, here we go. And okay. go. Four words. First word. Down. Fourth word. Thin wire. Down on a wire. Um. Walking. Um, um, Y'all, you're so close the first time. Um, <laughs> middle words are just filler words. I guess I can't say that. <laughs> um, down, down and wire. Um, down, down and wire. Down and wire. Uh, oh, oh. Down, down to the wire. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I was oh, like, I and, and other people are also guessing the same thing. So fantastic. Yeah. Good. Oh, okay. I'm not. Well, I'm <laughs> Run a <and> roll now. <laughs> no stopping us. All right. Last but not least. Last but not least. Um, all right. Thanks. Thanks for participating, everyone, by the way. Yeah, I, this I'm is fun. Thoroughly enjoying this. Yeah. And uh, all right. Let's see. What do I want to do here? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. I, I, I hope this one's easy, but we'll see. Actually, let's let's answer this question that just popped up here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Jenny is asking, can a good self tape be used in a demo reel? Hi, Jen. Um, it's something again to ask your agent. I have seen uh, demo reels, by the way, that were nothing but self tapes. If someone didn't have um, their reel yet, or if somebody was waiting for work to come in because let's say you've done a ton of work let's say you have like three projects that you've already finished um and you're waiting for those clips to come in but maybe they haven't premiered yet they haven't you know for whatever reason they're not done or it's a film that's doing the you know short film circuitry and you just can't get your holds on it yet um yeah i've definitely seen really good self tapes be part of demo reels in lieu of professional work um Again, it's to showcase your ability as an actor if the casting director wants to see it. Um, but they will be very clear too, uh, you know, in your notes from casting, if they do request to see some stuff from you, they might say, we don't want any self tapes. And at that point, it's then back to your agent uh, to say, or yourself if you're self-represented, to say, well, you know what, I'm waiting for some of my work to be done. I don't have that yet, but would you be willing to take a look at uh, a few clips that I have of my self tapes? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that makes sense. Hopefully, hopefully that, uh, casting is not scary. They're amazing, no. like people who are all on your side. So they're not going to be, you know, mad at that. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for the question, Jan. Appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. Um, all right. I, I'm going to do my last one here. Oh, there's another question. Oh. Uh, 
actually, you know what? I'm gonna I, I can actually show this question. So I, oh, I might just great. do that. There we go. Fancy. Oh, look at that. Right? I, I, I'm learning new stuff about this software. Yeah, that's great. Um, is it okay to work for award-winning indie movies or will it take away your regular jobs? Um, so do you mean by in, in doing that instead of something else or just to clarify the question so I know that I'm, I'm answering it correctly from what I know. What do you think, Gary? Is there... Are you interpreting that a certain way? Um, like, yeah, I think a little bit of clarification is is needed, but based on how I am reading that, I don't think um, I, I don't think it should affect your your regular jobs and in fact it, if anything i think it'll enhance um yeah i agree um your your, your others your other jobs yeah um, I mean, yeah if that's if that's the question of just like should you be working on indie films versus um non-indie you know like studio production um if you got the time and it's not conflicting with anything else uh absolutely for sure you should be um you know i there's cyclicality and seasonality, I should say, um, in in the film and TV industry within the year. So your downtimes tend to be, you know, uh, November, December. It's actually, you know, right now tends to be a downtime, like in, in spring, not so much June. We should be hitting things up um, in normal circumstances. It would be busy during the summer. Um, so during your downtime, yeah, absolutely. If, if there's not a ton of stuff going on, absolutely. Like go and, and do indie projects, keep yourself busy and, uh, creatively satisfied. You know, there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so, and hopefully I pronounced your name correctly as well. Uh, Porus, if that doesn't answer your question, please let us know. And, and, uh, just, yeah, just re-ask the question if you don't mind. Um, so Jan's got another question here, which I'll share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. No, nope, wrong one. There okay. we go. Okay. Um, would there be concerns about non-disclosure for the self-tape audition script used in the demo reel? Yes. Yes. So you don't want to be using anything that hasn't aired yet. Um, that's, you know, and, and same thing with the demo reels. Like that's just kind of uh, industry um, etiquette. You know, if, if you're using, and usually you wouldn't even be able to get that footage anyway until it's aired. Um, but let's say you did it like a self tape, like kind of what Jan is saying, and it's from an audition, a really recent audition, um, that hasn't aired yet on television or, you know, premiered or whatever it may be. Um, you don't want to put that publicly because you're giving away the storyline, right? No one's going to like that. Now, yeah. if it's something that you sent to your agent, um, and it's, just for the purpose of them being able to pitch you and to help casting, there is an agreement that they're not going to be sharing that publicly anywhere. That's just for their own personal use and that's to their own discretion and their own discussions with casting. Um, but you definitely do not want to post anything publicly online um, that hasn't aired yet because, you know, you're just, it's just asking for trouble. And, and just to honor, you know, the, the hard work of the storytellers and the writers and everybody who've put on so much work, you don't want to give anything away, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with all that for sure. Um, Porus did kind of have a little bit of a follow-up. Okay. Um, let's pop it up here. Um, oh. I, I, I don't necessarily agree with the last portion of that statement. Um, yeah, I, I believe in the movies, I think that's where most of us get our start, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a great way to build up a resume, even if you have been in a, um, I guess I'll do a little split there screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though um, you may have been in an award winning film, again, I believe that just enhances your uh, your personality, your skills, I suppose, and, and should not stop you from indie work, in, in my opinion. I, I think that's just, we all need to keep busy. We all need to keep working. And yeah. indie films are a great way to just keep our 
craft alive and skills active. Um, I agree. It's kind of my opinion. And I mean, I can't really speak to your coach's comment because I don't know in what context it was made. Um, you know, they obviously have their in well-intentioned um, feedback for you on that. But yeah, I agree with Gary. I think, you know, for me, it's not that I used everything from my indie days when I started, but it was definitely something um, that gave me onset experience and gave me the confidence so that when I did get to, to be on set with bigger productions, I knew what I was doing, you know? Um, yeah, indie sets can be a little bit different from bigger budgets, of course, because just of the size and scope and the amount of team that you have there. Um, but the foundations of it are the same. You know, knowing how to act, how knowing how to work in front of a camera, film and TV is your thing. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I think it's great. I think it's great when people just go out and do their own thing. And, you know, being part of indie films too, is part of contributing, you know, as an artist and getting out there in your community. Um, I've met some really, really wonderful people in Vancouver because that was a tough thing for me was moving to Vancouver and uh, <clears throat> not have, like I started from scratch. Like I didn't have uh, a network there because I was doing a, you know, starting a job in a completely different industry. So I didn't have any contacts and stuff. And I, a lot of amazing people that I'm still really good friends with started off in indie film, short films, um, student films. And I really cherish those relationships to this day. So, you know, if you're not getting something out of it for your real, you're definitely getting like a, a relationship or experience or something. Like it's it's valuable no matter what, I think. Hi, Pat. I just saw him jump on. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll show Pat's question here. Sure. If, uh, yeah, apologies. Yeah, no worries. Experience directing. Oh, that's, yeah, apologies. You talk no, we did it, actually. Um, yeah, so experience directing, I think what I said earlier was that um, uh, I, I just fell in love with it immediately because it gave me the experience of, of starting the project right from the start with the writer and then um wonderful wonderful producer she's in calgary kathleen um she got together such a beautiful team of people um working together for a certain vision of the of the film and it was such an education for me it really was um and that's what i love the most about it was just understanding the job of a director and how to work with the different departments and getting to understand the work of those different departments and cast and crew um, and working with actors, you know, it was kind of a natural transition for me, to be honest, being a coach to coaching actors on set. I love doing it. I fell in love with teaching very quickly once I started my workshops. Um, and then looking at post-production and kind of seeing the whole elements of everything come together. Um, so that's what I really love about directing. And I really want to do it again. <laughs> Not sure when that's going to happen, but I'll figure it out. Um, in terms of a project, I love stories that are character driven. And I think that speaks a lot to the fact that I'm an actor first and foremost. And for me, it's all about, it's all about that character. So when there's strong characters, there's strong story, in my opinion. Once again, I agree. Um, <laughs> so we're a little bit over our, our hour, which is actually fantastic in my opinion, because that means we've had some really good interaction uh, with with the viewers. So yeah. thank you for, to the viewers for joining us and, and yeah, actually thank you guys. participating. That's so awesome. That's kind of why we do this. Um, so because we are a little bit over, um, I can either end it there or if there are other questions, go ahead. I, I'll definitely hang around. Or yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to answer a few Perfect. more. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so if it sounds good, we'll we'll take on a couple more questions if you want. Um, and if anybody wants to see my last phrase thing, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, but you know. Are you sure? You know, button for punishment. <laughs> are you just died to do it? I think you have a good one in store. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good one. But, uh, oh, well, let's go for it. Let's do it. You want to go for it? All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, you know, it'll take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it'll literally be a minute or less. Up to you. And if anyone has any more questions, I'm happy to happy to answer if I if I can. All right. Final guess. And if there's no questions, then we'll kind of wrap it up there. Um, cool. But here we go. Okay. Um, 
<clears throat> and three. First. Jaw. Yeah. Three. Choking. Jaw choking. Passing out, dying. Killing. Uh, um, um, uh, God, I'm. <laughs> I have a word in my mind and I can't get it out. Uh, wrangling. Nope. Okay. Um. Jaw to strangle, jaw to choke. Oh. oh this is hard. I, I, don't I, don't don't to, I don't know how to. Don't know how else to do that. Um. Jaw to death. Jaw, uh, death? Jaw. Jaw to death, jaw. Oh my Time, God. Time's up. It's just that, that middle word I was like. Jaws of life? Uh, no. It was actually jaws of death. Jaws of death. Oh my gosh. Yes. I didn't get that. So it was just the uh, of. I was just like, how do I do of? I don't know how to do of. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's funny because it's always so obvious after the fact. And you're like, why did my brain not allow me to do that? <laughs> I know, right? You know? But that, that's what makes it fun, right? It's just, yeah. It's just yeah. kind of some mindless fun. and um, Choked to death. That would have been yeah, good. Yeah, no, that's that a good guess as well. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up there. I would right. love to thank uh, Yvonne for taking the time to chat with us today. Um, I, I, I think it was, I think it went quite well. Um, oh, we got a oh, question. Got another question here. So, yeah, let's let's have an answer. We go. Oh, yeah, this is a quite common one, uh, whether or not you should be taking on background work. Um, look, personally, I never have. And not because I thought it was not going to help me get jobs or anything like that. Um, I just didn't. It's, you know, if if people want to go and do some background work just to see how sets work, just to kind of get that experience, I'm all for it. I think that's fine. I think maybe you should have that conversation though, of course, with your agents and see how they're pitching you. And if they think that's gonna, um, you know, hinder your ability to move on from background work to on screen uh, speaking roles or whatever it may be. But personally, you know, I, I love background actors. They're absolutely essential to any production. They, they make it reality. <laughs> How weird would it be if you watched a show with no background? You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. The work is definitely respected. Um, so I, I don't see any issues with it. I just personally haven't, um, but that was just me. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll throw a quick two cents in there. I, I've done some background for sure. Um, and yeah, it, it's, I mean, honestly, that's what helped me actually fall back in love with the, the whole acting kind of thing is I just got an opportunity to do some background on a TV set and, just watching it all in works, you know, the, the setups, the teardowns, the, you know, changing of angles and the actors working together, just watching it was just, you know, breathtaking in a way. And it just enhanced my, my love for the, the art. Um, so I, I definitely don't think it's a bad experience at all to, to, to background. Um, yeah. Like what you said, it's a great education. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a great learning experience for sure. Yeah, and it's a great way to network, to be honest as well, with with other fellow actors and everything else as you're sitting, um, you know, in between takes and such. Yeah, for sure. Good question. Um, that comes yeah. up a lot. Absolutely. Uh, all great questions today. So with that, thank you, everybody else that logged in today to, to watch us today. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised with the number of folks we got in. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, next next week, next Saturday, so everybody's aware, uh, we will be interviewing uh, Spencer Streichert, who's a stand-up comedian and also fellow actor, producer, and uh, um, currently festival founder yeah he was yeah. At the international film festival i was a uh, an adjudicator a judge uh for the first round it was really cool i the we got over 600 submissions from i think it was like over 50 countries i yeah, mean unbelievable so that yeah. should be a really interesting conversation yeah absolutely yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that chat with him for sure yeah. so once again thank you everybody um i hope you have a great rest of the weekend and uh hopefully we'll see you online again soon. yeah thank you guys so much for joining and gary thank you so much for for having me and for putting on this talk um 
such a fun thing to do while we're all at home keeping safe. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's like a fun thing to do. If you got oh, an hour to spare. Yeah. In the comments. Thank you guys. All right. Have a good day, all everybody. Right. Bye.